my fellow Nigerians, I speak to you today with a heavy heart and sense of responsibility, aware of the turmoil and violent protests unleashed in some of our states. Notably, among the protesters were young Nigerians who desired a better and more progressive country where their dreams, hope, and personal aspiration will be fulfilled. I am especially pained by the loss of lives in Bonn, Jigawa, Kano, Kaduna, and other states, the destruction of facilities in some states, and the wanton looting of supermarkets and shops, contrary to the promise of protest organizers, that the protest will be peaceful across the country. The destruction of properties set us back as a nation, as scarce resources will be again used to restore them. I commiserate with the families and relations of those who have died in the protest. We must stop further bloodshed, violence and destruction. As the president of this country, I must ensure public order in line with the constitutional oath to protect the lives and property of every citizen. Our government will not stand idly by and allow a few with a clear political agenda to tear this nation apart. Under the circumstances, I have I enjoy protesters and the organizers to suspend any further protest and create room for dialogue, which I have always acceded to at the slightest opportunity. Nigeria requires all hands on deck and it owes all, regardless of age, party, tribe, religion, or other divides, to work together, reshaping our destiny as a nation. To those who have taken undue advantage of this situation, to threaten any section of this country, be warned. The law will catch up with you. There is no place for ethnic bigotry or such threats in the Nigeria we seek to build. Our democracy progresses when the constitutional rights of every Nigerian are respected and protected. Our law enforcement agencies should continue to ensure full protection of life and properties of innocent citizens in a responsible manner. My vision for our country is one of a just and prosperous nation where each person may enjoy the peace, freedom, and meaningful livelihood that only democratic good governance can provide. One that is open, transparent, and accountable to the Nigerian people. For decades, our economy has remained anemic and taken a dip because of many misalignments that have stunted our growth. Just over a year ago, our dear country, Nigeria, reached a point where we, could, we couldn't afford to continue the use of temporary solutions to solve long-term problems for the sake of now and our unborn generations. I therefore took the painful yet necessary decision to remove first subsidy and abolish multiple foreign exchange system, which had constituted a news around the economic juggler of our nation and impede our economic development and progress. These actions block the greedy and the profit that smugglers and rent seekers made. They also block the undue subsidy 
we had extended to our neighboring countries to the de detriment of our people, rendering our economy prostrate. These decisions I made were necessary if we must reverse the decades of economic mismanagement that didn't serve us well. Yes, I agree. The box stops on my table. But I can assure you that I am focused fully on delivering the governance to the people. Good governance for that matter. In the past 14 months, our government has made significant strides in rebuilding the foundation of our economy to carry us into a future of plenty and abundance. On the physical side, aggregate government revenue has more than doubled, hitting over 9.1 trillion naira in the first half of 2024, compared to the first half of 2023 due to our efforts at blocking leakages, introducing automation, and mobilizing funds creatively without additional burden on the people. Productivity is gradually increasing in the non-oil sector, reaching new levels and taking advantage of the opportunities in our current economic ambience. My dear brothers and sisters, we have come this far, coming from a place where our country spent 97% of all our revenue on debt service. We have been able to reduce that to 68% in the last 13 months. We have also cleared legitimate outstanding foreign exchange obligations of about 5 billion without any adverse impact on our programs. This has given us more financial freedom and the room to spend more money on you, our citizens, to fund essential social services like education and healthcare. It has also led to our state and local government receiving highest allocation ever in our country history from the Federation account. We have also embarked on major infrastructure projects across the country. We are working to complete inherited projects critical to our economic prosperity, including roads, bridges, railways, power and oil and gas development. Notably, the Lagos Calaba Coastal Road Highway and Sokoto Badagri Highway projects will open up system connecting states, creating thousands of jobs and boosting economic output through trade, tourism, and cultural integration. Our once declining oil and gas industry is experiencing a resurgence on the back of the reforms I announced in May 2024 to address the gaps in the Petroleum Industry Act. Last month, we increased our oil production to 1.61 million barrels per day, and our gas assets are receiving the attention they deserve. Investors are coming back, and we have already seen two foreign direct investments signed over half a billion dollars since then. Fellow Nigerians, we are a country blessed with both oil and gas resources, but we met a country that had been dependent solely on oil-based petrol, neglecting the, its gas resources to power the economy. We were also using our hard earned foreign exchange to pay for and subsidize the use. To address this, we immediately launched our compressed natural gas initiative, CNG, to power our transportation economy and bring us down. This will save over 2 trillion naira a month being used to import PMS and AGO 
and free up our resources for more investment in healthcare and education. To this end, we'll be distributing a million kits of extremely low or no cost to commercial vehicles that transport people and goods and who currently consume 80% of imported PMS and AGO. We have started the distribution of conversion kits and setting up of conversion centers across the country in conjunction with the private sector. We believe that this CNG initiative will reduce transportation costs by approximately 60% and help to curb inflation. Our administration assumed its commitment to the youth by setting up the student loan scheme. To date, 45.6 billion has already been processed for payment to students and their respective institutions. I encourage more of our vibrant youth population to take advantage of this opportunity. We established the Consumer Credit Corporation with over 200 billion to help Nigeria to acquire essential products without the need for immediate cash payment, making life easier for millions of households. This will consequently reduce corruption and eliminate cash and opaque transactions. This week, I ordered the release of an additional 50 billion naira, each for NEL fund, the student loan, and credit corporation for the proceed of crime recovered by the EFCC. Additionally, we have secured $620 million under the Digital and Creative Enterprises, IDAIS, a program to empower our young people, creating millions of IT and technical jobs that will make them globally competitive. This program, including the 3 million technical talent scheme, Unfortunately, one of digital centers was vandalized during the protests in Kano. What a shame. In addition, we have introduced the Skill Up Artisans Program, SUPER, the Nigerian Youth Academy, NIA, and the National Youth Talent Export Program, NATIP. Also, more than 517 billion has been released to the 36 states to expand livelihood support to their citizens. Why 600,000 nano businesses have benefited from our nano grants? An additional 400,000 more nano businesses are expected to benefit. Furthermore, 75,000 beneficiaries have processed to receive our 1 million micro and small business single digit interest loans starting this month. We have also built 10 MSME hubs within the past year created 240,000 jobs through them. And five more hubs are in progress, which will be ready by October this year. Payments of one billion each also have been made to large manufacturers under a single digit loan to boost manufacturing output and stimulate growth. Aside the national minimum wage into law last week, and the lowest earning worker will now earn at least 70,000 naira a month. Six months ago, in Kasana, Abuja, I inaugurated the first phase of our ambitious housing initiative, the Renew Hope City and Estate. This project 
is the first of six we have planned across the nation's geopolitical zones. Each of these cities will include a minimum of 1,000 housing units with Kasana itself set to deliver 3,212 units. In addition to this city project, we are also launching the Renew Hope Estate in every state each comprising 500 housing units. Our goal is to co complete a total of 100,000 housing units over the next three years. This initiative is not only about providing homes, but also about creating thousands of jobs across the nation, as well as stimulating economic growth. We are providing incentives to farmers to increase food production at affordable prices. I have directed that tariffs and other import duties should be removed on rice, wheat, milk, sorghum, and drugs, and other pharmaceutical medical supplies for the next six months. And the first instance to help drive down the prices. I've been meeting with our governors and key ministers to accelerate food production. We've distributed fertilizers. Our target is to cultivate more than 10 million hectares of land to, to grow what we eat. The federal government will provide all necessary incentives for this initiative whilst the state provide the land, which will put millions of our people to work and further increase food production. In the past few months, we have also ordered mechanized farming equipment, such as tractors and planters worth billions of Naira from the United States, Belarus, and Brazil. I can confirm to you that the equipment is on the way. My dear Nigerians, especially our youths, I have heard you loud and clear. I understand the pain and the frustration that drive this protest. And I want to assure you that our government is committed to listening and addressing the concerns of our citizens. But we must not let violence and destruction tear our nation apart. We must work together to build a brighter future where every Nigerian can live with dignity and prosperity. The tax before us is a collective one and I am leading the charge as your president. A lot of work has gone into stabilizing our economy and I must stay focused on ensuring that the benefits reached every single Nigeria as we promised. My administration is working very hard to improve and expand our national infrastructure and create more opportunities for our young people. Let nobody misinform and miseducate you about your country or tell you that your government does not care about you. Although there have been many dashed hopes in the past, we are in a new era of renewed hope. We are working hard and the result will soon be visible and concrete for everyone to see, feel and enjoy. Let us work together to build a brighter future for ourselves and for generations to come. Let's choose hope over fear, unity over division, and progress over stagnation. The economy is recovering. Please, don't shut out this oxygen. Now that we have been enjoying democratic governance for 25 years, do not let the extremists of the enemies of democracy 
use you to promote an unconstitutional agenda that will set us back on our democratic journey. Forward ever, backward never. In conclusion, security operatives should continue to maintain peace, law, and order in our country following the necessary Convention on Human Rights, to which Nigeria is a signatory. The safety and security of all Nigerians are paramount. Thank God and thank you for your attention. And may God continue to bless our great nation.